Guitar tips, guitar tips, just the tips, just for you. Guitar tips. Hello and welcome. My name is Adam Levy. This is my weekly video blog, or vlog, I guess, if, it, if I want to get the, the weekly, it's my vlog. Um, maybe that's a, some word in Icelandic. But anyway, uh, I'm here each and every Friday. I post a guitar tip just for you. And uh, if you've been here before, you know that these are not meant to be, you know, full-length guitar lessons. I'm not going to do a, a transcription of some famous guitar piece or explain uh, some heady theoretical concept. Uh, just little ideas that can help you in your performance, in your practice. Um, today's guitar tip is capos are for everybody. Um, in one of my earlier guitar tips, uh, I think it was number seven, I'll have to go back and look. Um, the tip was transpose, transpose, transpose. And in that tip I said, you know, don't use a capo, uh, or don't necessarily use a capo for transposition. The intention of that tip, and uh, I encourage you to go back and watch it, is that you should be able to play anything you can play on the guitar. You shouldn't. It shouldn't. It shouldn't be locked into just one key. Uh, that you should actually take things you learn on the guitar and move them into different keys. It makes you a more complete guitarist. It makes you a more complete musician. It's good for your brain to think about different keys. It's good for your hands to experience playing different keys. There's there's no reason not to transpose. Whatever your excuse may be, personally, uh, just get rid of it and learn to transpose things into different keys. There's a lot of music to be made and a lot of guitar to explore. So uh, that's that tip. But that said... Capos can be a really powerful tool, and the reason that this tip is called Capos Are For Everybody is that for many years I was the lead guitar player character in whatever band I was in, and there would usually be uh, a singer-songwriter up front, center stage at a microphone, singing uh, his or her songs, usually with a capo. Capos are great for singer-songwriters because they allow you to change uh, keys and yet still play in basic shapes. So right now uh, I'm at capo one. If I play the guitar tips theme in C, guitar tips, guitar tips, just the tips. So you can see how that works. I'm using the same basic shapes. Uh, my right hand doesn't have to change. My left hand doesn't have to change. And yet I'm in in a good key that suits my voice. If I wanted to bring it up higher, I certainly could do. Guitar tips, guitar tips, just the tips, just for you, right? And etc. Uh, and of course, you don't have to just play in C, you could use whatever. But the point is, we can use these uh, open position chords that we all start out with and still get to do all that cool decorative stuff you know that's what's fun about capos I mean what's, what's what's fun about open position playing is that you get the guitar ringing you know things can as opposed to just playing kind of jazz voicings another aspect of the guitar but I think a, a really neat part of the guitar is when strings ring out and even when your chord shapes change some strings can ring out and that's so cool so the capo allows you to do that in virtually any key but I always thought you know always when I was younger in my 20s and playing with singer songwriters and even into my 30s I just I couldn't imagine why an electric guitar player or lead guitar player 
or non-singing guitar player would ever, ever need a capo. I just couldn't imagine it. And then um, around the time that Bill Frizzell, uh, do you guys know Bill Frizzell? Great guitar player. I would call him a jazz guitar player, though his music, I think, is, is broader than that. But anyway, around the time he put out a record called Nashville, I would go to see him play shows, and I'd see that he was using a capo to play kind of tunes, you know, in basic chords, D, G, C, but not to always be in those keys of, of C, D, G, whatever. And uh, I got to play on a record that he was on. Uh, uh, we weren't there at the same time, but we're on the final record together, uh, Nora Jones's first record, which is called Come Away With Me. And there's a song in there called Long Day Is Over. And uh, it's in D flat because that's the key that Nora Jones wanted to sing it in. And probably on piano, that's a fun key to play in. It seems like uh, that would be a fun key to play in on the piano. But on the guitar, playing in D flat is can be limiting. There's no open strings. And of course, Bill Frizzell, clever guy that he is, uh, recorded it with a capo at the first fret. There's just, and you know, he's got this big warm sound with this tremolo going. If you did it with, without the capo, you just have to kind of, or, it's fine, but it doesn't sound, it doesn't have the, the cool magic guitar mojo thing that open strings can do. So when I heard that and when I started seeing him play with a capo, I thought, yeah, maybe a capo could be used by a lead guitarist, electric guitarist, non-singer, songwriter guitarist, instrumental player. So I use it a lot now. I use it for recording sessions. Sometimes if the singer, songwriter, or if the main guitar part of the song is down here, I'll capo up here to get out of the way, or vice versa. If the main guitar part is up here, uh, maybe I'll, I'll, I'll not use a capo or capo down low. Sometimes I even use what I call a negative capo, which means tuning the whole guitar down a half step or a whole step, um, farther even if, if you want to, but after a while the strings can get floppy and kind of ridiculous. But, you know, put the guitar in a key that makes sense for the song that you're playing. It's especially true in the studio, where you have time to retune. If you're on a live gig and you only have one guitar, you may not want to deal with tuning your guitar down. But anyway, that's something you can do. I call it the negative capo. But this is the positive capo. Um, I use one called Shub, S-H-U-B-B. -B. There's lots of other cool capos. G7 is a cool capo. Kaiser is a cool capo. Um, word of warning, I would say about Kaiser. The reason I use Shub is that, to my ears, it does the least pulling the guitar out of tune. Like when I go to third fret, um, it, it doesn't make the guitar go sharp. Some some capos pull so hard against the strings when you clamp them down that uh, it actually pulls the guitar a little bit sharp. And if you're playing a solo show, it doesn't matter. But if you're playing with other people, they're not all going to go sharp with you, um, especially not the piano player. So just be forewarned, um, I do like Kaiser capos, but to my ears, they tend to pull guitars sharp. Uh, Shub, because the tension is adjustable, there's a little uh, tension uh, thumb screw or whatever back there. You can get it just right, so it's just tight enough to keep things uh, in order and uh, not so tight that it chokes down the guitar into a sharp situation. Um, so you may be wondering, uh, if you've never used a capo, you know, how does it work? Uh, and that's a fair question. So basically, you'd want to use it when you're in a song that's mostly in one key, using mostly open position chords. And then you each fret is a, is a half step in music. So if we say if we go to capo one and we play a C chord, C plus one half step is C sharp. So I'm now in C sharp or D flat. If I played a G chord, I'm now playing G sharp or A flat because that's G plus one. So G plus two is A. If I play an E chord now, E plus two half steps is F sharp, right? 
A plus two half steps is B. So if you have a song that's in B, you could use the capo and play it in A shapes. So this looks like a long A, but it's actually B now. So that's one way to use the capo to play in B. You could also use G shapes and play at the fourth fret. G plus four half steps is B. So you'd have this. You could use E shapes at capo seven. E plus seven half steps is B. capo up super super duper high and uh, play out of D shapes D plus nine half steps is B yeah, so that's a possibility now if you wanted to use your C shapes of course you'd have to use the negative capo and play in C minus a half step, tune everything down a half step, and then you could play C shapes and be in the key of B. And this is all in the name of complementing two things. One is if it's a vocal thing, it would be complementing the voice, or it could be complementing another guitar part. Very often I'm uh, on sessions I'm overdubbing a secondary part. Either the singer has played a part, or I'm asked, uh, to play like a kind of basic strummy acoustic part and then I have to come up with a secondary part. So I'm trying to get out of the way and not play a part that sits right on top of the main part. Um, you look for where the holes are, at least that's my approach. So if there's a lot going on in the low register, I'll play high register. If there's a lot going on in the middle register, then you could maybe go around to the edges and play super low or super high uh, and so on. Also, if one part is very busy, you might play a part that's very simple, just using you know quarter notes or half notes even. Um, if one part is very dense with a lot of you know ringing um, stuff like that, you might uh, play something that's more spacious in the voicing, um, et cetera, et cetera. There's a lot of ways to to find the opposites, but. I'll usually start there, like where can I go where there's there's nobody else there? And in the end, as, as the part gets more crafted and more focused during the session, sometimes it won't end up being quite as far away as, uh, as where I started. But I always try and start at the, the opposite end of the field. So that's the guitar tip. Capos are for everybody. Yes, even you. Get yourself a capo. I, I usually, at any given time, have two or three floating around. I'll tuck, tuck them away in guitar cases or, or um, you know, my bag that I put cables and stuff in. Just, I always want to have a spare because once you get into using capos, uh, it would be a bummer to get to the gig and find that you don't have one. So if you get into them, that's my advice. Don't buy one, buy three and just hide them. Put them in the in guitar cases and your bag that you carry stuff in and uh, put them in your favorite suit jacket that you wear to gigs or whatever. Just always have one with you. And that's it. Capos are for everybody. My name is Adam Levy. This is Guitar Tips. Uh, I'll see you again next Friday. Thanks for tuning in. Please subscribe. Please subscribe down below and please tell a friend. Please share this. Uh, that's it. Okay. Take care and stay tuned and take good